I've learned more from failures and insecurities and all sorts of things than I've ever learned from successes in life. In, in the service industries and working at a grocery store at midnight to 8am, I think those jobs taught me more about working in Hollywood than almost anything I've ever done. Because, you know, I, Hollywood, you know, you work with a lot of people that, that are, you know, not necessarily accountable. Uh, there's a tremendous flexibility with uh, uh, people who, you know, you could show up a week late and they'll just clap once you get to set. Uh, I think working those jobs, they taught me a real kind of steadfast accountability. I so always sort of felt like if I'm five minutes early, I'm already 10 minutes late. And I, I'm telling you, that's like half of the good things that have come to me have been about being super and hi hyper accountable. And that also creates a kind of infuses some gratitude for the position that you're in and understanding the position that you're in is sort of a fleeting thing. It doesn't uh, last. And um, so, you know, I those jobs taught me a lot. I mean, we're going to Safeway. We're going to that 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 bar. If you're 15 minutes late, you're fired. Just see that, you know, a lot of attention, good and bad is probably not great for anybody. Some people thrive on it. Some yeah. people really handle it very well. and and integrated into who they are in a, in a, in a way that works incredibly well. Um, and then other people don't, you know, I've seen movie stars, with giant air quotes that, that uh, you know, it's, it's really been one of the more devastating things that have ever happened to them. My highest goal in show business was to be the wacky neighbor in a sitcom, quite literally. <laughs> like if I had go to Los Angeles, I started an improv comedy. If mm -hmm. I could go to Los Angeles, I could get a job as the wacky neighbor in a sitcom. I would be set. That was all I ever really wanted. So everything else that's happened, and it's all happened quite slowly, has been a kind of an aggregate. Um, if you want to call it fame or any of that stuff, it's always been very slow. I didn't become totally dysfunctional by Hollywood, which is, you know, something that, that I don't know if it speaks to my character, but it, it's easy to, for that to happen. Yeah. I see, I saw, I've, I've been doing it for 25 years. Of I mean, course. I've seen it happen all around me. So um, it's a tough thing, man, when you're, when you're in the spotlight in any way to kind of keep your, keep your stuff together, so. Yeah, I've had anxiety my whole life really and um you know it's there's a i feel like i have two parts of my personality that one takes over when that happens when i would go out on like letterman back in the day i would always be nervous but i remember i'd be standing backstage before the curtain would open and i would i would think to myself i'm gonna die i'm literally gonna die here or the curtain's gonna open and i'm just gonna be <laughs> this is gonna be a symphony of vomit just like <laughs> something horrible is gonna happen but as soon as that curtain opens and this happens in my work a lot too it's like this little guy takes over and he's like i got this you're cool i feel like my heart rate drop and my breathing calm and i just kind of go out and and I'm this different person. No matter how many years you do something, you don't get jaded, you're passionate about it, you love it. And it spoke to so much of what I love about this industry, even though it's very easy to find so many things that are detestable about it. There's there's truly great people that work in it, and artists and people that are you know living, breathing human beings, not just sort of products that we've created. Um, I just love that. That, that to me, was a, a huge lesson. Vulnerability is beautiful and strong weirdly even though strength to some people might be anathema to vulnerability i think like there's you know you can't really have one without the other it's so easy to blame yourself or to blame something else and it's actually that idea of leading with vulnerability and admitting that just because you're the father doesn't necessarily mean you know what's best to be able to start conversations from a place of openness and not knowing and vulnerability is a huge honor i think we're sort of entering an age where you know don't talk about this. I mean, my father's generation, they never talked about mental health or what was going on inside. It was just bottle it up and, you know, and, and the younger generations and hopefully the, the, you know, my kids and their kids will, you know, have, have more open dialogues about this kind of stuff. And sort of, that's, that's kind of the way out is to feel, I always found like when you feel like you're not alone in something, for some reason you can recover a lot faster or you can see the light a little bit faster. Um, but when you feel like, and a lot of people do, they feel like they're completely alone, and that's the worst feeling on earth. So talking about it kind of, to a certain degree, sheds a little sliver of light in there, and I think that's important. I think as a father, I really could understand that feeling of impotence you have sometimes when you, you know you love and know your kid more than anyone, but you actually don't always know the answers, particularly when it comes to issues of mental health. You start to kind of become your own worst critic. So you, you know, most of the time I'm, I'm being hard on myself. And I was like a real introvert as a kid. I did not like school. I did not like the social pressures. I didn't like the dynamics. Yeah, I think, I think my 12 year old self would be 
proud of me because I do this thing in a way that uh, has some integrity, I, I, I like to think. Uh, a 12 year old would look at where I'm at and I'm, you know, we're doing all right. I think. Part of why I've been successful, I think, in my business life is, is being somewhat self-aware and, and I understand the idea that when you extract a lot from a system, you need to put back in, put some back in as well. So um, part of it comes from that. I can't, you know, safely say that I would enjoy my position in life if I wasn't sharing it. Um, you know, not just sharing wealth, but also sharing power and you know, stepping aside where appropriate as well. Um, and you can do all these things. And, you know, at the end of the day, like you're still doing all right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it doesn't change you know, much for your own personal situation other than it really feels great.